just joined us. Where you been? Pirates inbound to Langlois. Block begins to run to Hopkins for the win. Tyler Hopkins. Oh, he's got it. It was basically formed by the Southern Worcester County League schools, the small schools. And again, mainly because we had no place to go. The larger schools got appointed, if they were picked at that time, and the smaller schools had no place to go. So the Central Mass or the small schools formed the Clark Tournament. In those days, there was no districts. Just three teams from Central Mass got picked to go up to Western Mass to play. And so, and no divisions, if St. John's was the best team, and, and uh, let's see, Classical and South, those would be the three teams that went. So none of the smaller schools had a chance to go, so the Clark Tournament was it for them. They had no chance of going on after the season was over. That was the reason that it started, to give these schools in the county a chance to play in a tournament. Holden, uh, Lunenburg, down in the Blackstone area, Northbridge and those days. The people who ran the clock wanted it to be a county, a Worcester County thing, and out, rather than a city thing. It was big time. That's all we had, clock tournament. And it was run by Russ Granger, who was just a beautiful gentleman, the AD and the athletic director here at uh, Clark University. He was instrumental in getting it uh, started, and he was a big cog in it now. He did it from 39, 1939 to 1955, and he was great. I mean, Russ, he was a great coach, but he was a gentleman, and he was so well respected by all his peers. If you were a, a school that had a 14 and five record, you weren't going to a tournament. I mean, the, the, the Eastern Mass Tournament took the Eastern Mass teams. They take, didn't take any Central. The Western Mass Tournament would take Western Mass teams. They would take two or three Central Mass teams in 1939, 49, 59, even in the 60s. And your record had to be phenomenal. Only like three schools were uh, allowed to go. Uh, so if you had a 14 and 5 record uh, or a 12 and 6 record, you weren't going anywhere. So the Clark Tournament started. And it got those teams that had those kind of records. Good teams that were 15 and 5, 14 and 6, 13 and 7, and so on. And it was a tournament for them. Believe me, when you got a record, like going into the clock tournament, you get a record of 20 and, or whatever, 18 and, and 3 or 4. That's not a loser's tournament. There were a lot of good basketball teams that came in, just couldn't be picked for district play. So it elevated itself up, and now that it became the alternative. When I was 12 years old, I started going to the Clark games. A bunch of us from the neighborhood used to go and skip in. There was a back window in the old gym and would skip in. And those games would be absolutely packed. It was a terrific high school gym. That was quite a gym. You know, one, one end of the gym was darker than the other. When you came in the door, from people coming in, spectator door, was very bright. Well, you go down the other end where the scoreboard was and so on, the lighting started over the basket and came out, whereas at the other end it started in back of the basket and came out. So, you know, when it's a little darker, we always took the first half, when I was playing at clock, the dark end first half. There wasn't a lot of room on each side of the, of the, of the gym, uh, uh, the end lines, and it was just, uh, it was a great atmosphere to play in. It was a real tight gymnasium. You know, we've filmed many games at the old Oxbridge High School. Was it much bigger than that, to be quite honest with you? They had to clear the gym out after every session. So they'd have an afternoon session, then they'd have an evening session, and you couldn't stay. You actually had to leave after every single game. People would hide in the bathroom so they wouldn't have to pay. Uh, it, was, it was an unbelievable situation. Whenever the clock tournament was on, it was standing room only. That was, a, that was it. I remember playing it all three nights that we played there. You had to get a drink in, in, in those days. The coaches didn't think about water. You had to go out in a corridor to get a drink. And you had to go through a crowd to get out in, into the corridor to get a drink. It seemed so small. It seemed like a postage stamp. Uh, as a matter of fact, they wouldn't even allow more than three cheerleaders in because they wanted to save seats for the fans. It was cramped inside that place. And then there were people standing in the corners because you couldn't get seats to sit down in and so on. So uh, I, I can't imagine what the fire laws were like uh, inside that gymnasium. You'd get off the bus, 
you'd see the crowds lined up outside. It was just like Hoosiers. We'd work our way inside, and the very first thing that they would do to you, the committee would send you downstairs into the locker room areas under the gym floor. And then you'd start changing up and you could hear the ball bouncing on the floor upstairs. You could hear the crowd screaming, and your nervousness heightened even before the game even started while you're downstairs waiting to upstairs. Well, when we played, every game was packed. 900 fans standing under the baskets, and it was jammed. I mean, everyone came out. You know, two or three buses came with the students. Coming from a little town like Blackstone in a small gym but to a college campus, and it, at that time was a big gym. You know, it was, it was really something, you know, I mean, up there to see all the high school teams. High school basketball Friday night was like Friday Night Lights, you know. And when we got up to the tournament and uh, excitement grew and, uh, you know, student body grew and, and it was, just, uh, it was, it was just, it was just, it was just great. Everything happened with it. Going to the Clark tournament, uh, it was more of a community event than it was just a regular high school basketball game. Would I like to go back to the old gym? Of course. Every time I'm down there, clock, I walk into the old place. It's just a dining hall now. I even think they took down the baskets. Dine it. But we used to have, we used to have good, good games in there, good competition. We've tried to keep it modern, but still have the traditions. And seeing people in the same positions all those years, some of the same fans in the same seats all those years, is great. It's part of the great tradition. We don't really mess with a lot of the customs that we have there, the sportsmanship code, the, the lack of individual honors, it's all kind of a team championship thing. You go there every February and you see people that you don't see the rest of the whole year, even during the basketball season. Referees corner is there, retired refs come back, retired coaches come back, retired athletic directors are there. You know, you see some of your friends from 20, 30 years ago. Tradition of the Clark, which is uh, made by the players have played there and the coaches and certainly the culture of the clock and that's what what really impacts you when you're there they honor the teams that come back every year and the players that come back year after year it's the only place that you can go to know that you've been there uh, as a player as an official as a coach and as a fan okay it's one of the only tournaments that you can relive your experiences there for many many years everybody has a clock story to tell. Just the professionalism, the way they run it, how important it is to the people that run it to make sure that it, it not only uh, stays the same, but it gets better every year. They just try to tweak it to make it get better every single year. It's a first pass event. Everybody that's involved, um, you know, from the volunteers, the athletic directors, everybody at Clark, you know, really puts on a top notch event with all the televised games, you know, the specials, the interviews, and it's something that you don't really get in Central Mass basketball. For me, while the districts are a really nice thing, and I think you hear many coaches talk about this, the atmosphere at the Clark is very different. You know, it's, it's whole communities come out to support it. It's, um, it's very dynamic. Uh, the crowds are unbelievable. The affiliations of the schools, the association with the MIAA, the commitment and dedication from Clark University, I think, has not wavered on any one of those three fronts. I think that the electricity and the excitement of the tournament has always been the same. When you talk to uh, an Oxford High School player from 40 years ago, um, I think you're gonna see the same exact thing. People you know, go to school in a town and then buy their house and stay in the town. There's that tradition in, these, in, in the, the suburbs, I think, that really just carries on and on. We do raise the scholarship money. We give out about an average of five to $7,000 a year to incoming clock freshmen from our 37 towns and that has been pretty constant. It gives us an opportunity to be part of a group of athletic directors and coaches that um, have a lot of pride in, in running not only a first class tournament but giving back to um, students that come here with scholarships. As a team that was always the first goal and I think to this day if you ask coaches uh, as well as players, their first inclination and their first goal as they look at their upcoming season is to qualify for the Clark Tournament. You want that experience for your kids, so the goal is always to get there. Uh, and then once you're there, you're just hoping that you can prepare the kids as best as you can uh, to get them ready for the competition and the level of play that, that's going to be there. When you plan to get into the Clark, you say, boy, if we can only get there, 
You know, if we can only get there. And once you're there, rule number two is it's no big deal. But for some reason, it always is a big deal. We see it every single year that a team comes out of nowhere. You know, it could be an eight seed. You could be a one seed. You could get knocked off right away if you're a one seed. If you don't come to play, somebody at that lower level is going to beat you. I don't care if they only have 90 kids in the school or they have 600 kids in the school. It doesn't matter. The higher seed doesn't mean anything in my eyes. We go there. We like to be the higher seed. The only thing it does for you is I tell the kids, you sit on the left-hand side of the, of the auditorium. In the clock tournament, you could play teams that are the best teams in Central Mass, Division One, Two, II, or Three from different leagues. I've gone in there uh, with teams that were very, very good and have struggled to, to squeak out wins and, and then gone in with teams that, you know, maybe were marginal and have had some big upsets. As a coach, well, for me, it was a lot of frustration. I mean, it took me nine or ten times. I think it was the ninth time we, we qualified for the Clark. We finally won it. You play in a college court. You play in front of a college type, college-sized crowd, and it just creates that that atmosphere that you, you remember everything. When we won in 82, right away the 1945 team got together, contacted me, and they set up a banquet. They set up a, a, a you know, a, down the Italian club in town, really did a beautiful party for us. So that just shows you that, you know, that camaraderie and, you know, the spirit of the clock. Those guys were so happy for us and, they, you know, they got us jackets and everything else. So. Making the clock tournament, uh, we made it about 10 times when I was coaching. It was always a thrill, always a big highlight. We had lost the finals uh, two years in the 90s. We made the final game and lost both. And in 98, we were playing the final. It was the night after the semifinal. Um, and we made the final two years before. We came back after the semifinal and we had a walkthrough at about quarter of midnight right here. We played three great games that week and won that championship. Winning that championship really out of the blue, we, didn't, we were seventh seeded so we didn't really expect to do that. The historical perspective of the whole thing hit, hits you right away. And it was the first one for Blackstone Millville so we looked up, you know, what about Blackstone? And they won one only one. Many of those guys were still around, even in town here, so I decided we were going to invite them back and have them have a reunion. Yeah, it was great to see them win again because uh, it was such a long drought. It was something in back in years gone by and, and all of a sudden, you know, it, it brought the tournament back to light, brought everything back to light, memories back to light. Some of the stories they told, it was a different era, a different time, but I was shocked at how much they remembered about the clock tournament. I think at one time or another, almost every school that's been in it, it has a great game, a real great game. It was a big thing uh, for the townspeople. It was an outlet for the townspeople. The kids in town played basketball. I mean, there was only, like I said, actually there was actually only two, if you talk about it, there was only two real sports, baseball and basketball. Basketball was it. Basketball was it. When we went to play on the road, everybody came and followed uh, the team. And of course, they had tremendous support from the town. Basketball became Spencer's number one uh, sport throughout. The, and, and ball players, no matter where, whether you went to St. Mary's and came to the high school and learned to play the game as a freshman, by the time you were a junior or senior, you were, you were an excellent ball player. We went to the clock tournament uh, in my senior year, only because the clock, the, the tournament officials had a ruling at that time. If you were the previous champ, you got to come and play. Came from behind, won all three games, and won the championship. We beat Leicester. Grafton was the final. We played Grafton in the finals. You can ask anyone, did David Prouty ever back his team? <laughs> oh, boy. It was tremendous. As a freshman, played a lot of basketball at Prouty in my freshman year, and we went into the clock tourney and won it. So that was my first experience in the uh, clock tourney. I got to see limited action as a freshman. Um, then, of course, sophomore year, we went in again and, uh, and won it, uh, junior year and senior year. So it was a sweep of four years. Always were one-pointers or two-pointers. I don't think I ever saw, and I went up there for two or three years when I was, as I said, I was in seventh grade, eighth grade. And I don't think I ever saw a route. I think everything was right down to the wire. And the same when we played. They dominated uh, basketball in through, through their four years in school. He was a tremendous shooter. And between him and, and uh, Lou Alex, who was his, in his class, 
the two of them could do anything they wanted to do. And wherever they went, they were winners. One of the greatest shooters in the game of basketball, in high school, in college, and then he had a shot with the uh, pros, with, who was drafted by the Celtics. He played at Clark University. He was beyond belief. He could shoot in the class of Jack the Shot Foley and any of the pros. But we had a good group of, of players uh, that started maybe in the seventh or eighth grade. And uh, after our freshman year, we knew that uh, we had a pretty good team. And uh, we, uh, we got into the Clark tournament. That was one of our goals that year. I can remember our coach, Paige Roden, saying that that would be one of the goals that uh, we, he would like to achieve. As a team, players, you really enjoy it, uh, the excitement of it, and uh, try to get back the next year, and, and we did. And then uh, we ended up uh, you know, winning it uh, the second year in a row. The third year was, uh, we, we were all seniors then, and we were, we were a very good team. Uh, we, had, uh, we had Bob Riedel, who was one of the leading scorers in the county, uh, uh, Roy Johnson, outstanding players, and uh, we, uh, we went into that tournament undefeated. We were, uh, at the time, 17-0. and 0. When you become seniors, you're a little more cocky, I think, and you realize that uh, it's going to take a good team to beat us. And uh, so we, uh, we were very... Uh, we were a strong team going into that tournament. And Leicester was a, was a place that really supported its basketball team. You see people uh, in town, uh, you, you go to practice or come from practice and people would be talking, that's, you know, the coffee shops in town, they'd be just talking about, you know, how, how this team going to do in, in the Clark tournament. You really don't realize it at the particular time, but then after becoming a, a member of the Clark tournament committee, you look back and say, wow. We had a great run uh, twice. We had a great run between 1970 and 77. Uh, seven out of 11 years, we were in the clock final. And then again, in the 80s and into the early 90s, uh, 11 years stretch, seven out of the 11 times we were in the final. So 14 times we were in the finals during that time. That's one thing I'm really most proud of is our ability to get to that point. Really important growing up that uh, the clock was the biggest thing, probably the first thing that you wanted to um, that was one of your goals when you started the season was to make the clock tournament. So everyone's talking about it. Oh, you're in the clock. What seat are you in? You know, large school, small school. It's just a talk. Everyone's talking about it. Everyone is excited to go up to Worcester, bust into Worcester, and, and, and play in it and be a part of it. Our rich and uh, tradition here at Bowley High School has been from basketball. And uh, we go to that tournament, you know, we don't go there just to compete, we go there to win. Um, and our records show, obviously, with a, with a team that been to the finals the most times out of the clock tournament history. You know, my father going through it, Don Cushing, and now myself, uh, we take a lot of um, pride in going there. And uh, the kids go there, and some schools going there for the first time, you know, they're new to it. We're not new to it. We have our kids go there for all the small schools, games, if we're in the large school or vice versa. Well, even at the sixth grade level, we have these kids coming up and they're seeing this stuff. And now they expect to be there every year. And we're just not there just to play. We're not just there for the experience. We go there for one thing, it's to play on Friday or Saturday. My sophomore year and junior year, both times we didn't make it, was by a coin flip. We were 9-5 and five at the break. At the cut, uh, that, that time it was 14 games what the break was. And they picked select the teams at that time. And uh, we, had a, we were in a coin flip for two other teams, two years in a row, and we didn't get it. So, I mean, that, that really, really hurt. Clack tournament uh, was just a, a pulsating visitation for us. Uh, we couldn't wait to get there to see the crowds. Uh, couldn't wait to be involved. Our cheerleaders loved it. Our fans loved it. And even still to this day, I can go to a game at the Clack tournament that involves Webster, and I can see hundreds of people from the town of Webster Dudley in line can't wait to get in because that's their uh, entertainment for the week of February every single year. The run of uh, starting around 1969 through, through the mid 70s, uh, year after year after year, uh, our teams would go 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, up to 90. Uh, 91 time was an, another great run of, of great teams. So I wouldn't want to pick any one of those teams because I'm sure that I'd bump into one of those guys that I didn't pick and I'd hear about it. <laughs> We had a great following, uh, both my junior and senior year. We hadn't won it, I want to say, since I think the first and only clock tournament was, that Sutton won was 1958. So it was, our junior was Coach Ramasco's first clock tournament championship. And uh, I know it was very special for him. He loved the clock tournament. Sutton was really doing special things in the clock tournament, year after year after year after year. His teams just uh, were the hottest in Central Mass. Uh, the hottest small school in Central Mass, and the hottest school in the Clark tournament. It's the 
the tournament that the town will go out and, and really support. When you're placing someone who's legendary and who's tremendously successful. And the, and, and the thing that I think is most impressive about Steve was truly, you know, you see, we say this about all educators at some point, like they have this impact on kids, but, but he really had an amazing impact on his players. He wasn't just a coach and a coach for winning, he was a, he was a coach and a mentor. Uh, you talk to his players, so to this, I was talking with one of his players last night that played for him back in the 70s. Uh, coach Ransko was, was like, he was like the, the Johnny Wooden of Sutton. We have that rich history of success and there's an expectation of, of winning it. And, we, and, and that's kind of, Exciting that you, you, you feel this confidence where we've won it before, we've seen it. John Fahey was, uh, was a legend, uh, and uh, he was the uh, first winner of the clock. He won a small school division, and he was the AD that was actually on watch when I got hired. Um, my principal was Bill McGurk, who phenomenal guy also, who uh, won the next clock in the small school in the 90s. So they had each won a clock. And they kept telling me, you know, this is really a, a big tournament. You know, you got to get fired up for it. You got to have your players ready to go and, uh, you know, bring back the crown for the, for the town. I really didn't still understand it back then until, uh, until we won our first one. And then those guys were both there, you know. And, and I think that still happens a lot. When Groton goes, um, they come out of the woodwork. You know, we get a lot of people that show up and people that are part of the history of this uh, town and part of the history of basketball in this town. Growing up, uh, all my older siblings played in the clock tournament, so it was always something as a kid that I looked forward to playing in. Um, it always was something that you know I kind of dreamed of playing in, uh, envisioned myself playing in. So when I got to Garden Dustable, you know, it, it was it was a lot of fun. We usually had the uh, 7:45 late game, uh, kind of envisioned it like the prime time game. Teams were after us, but that was something that you know we kind of accepted and we and we liked the challenge. Tonight it's the large school finals as the number two seed Oakmont Spartans take on the number one seed Rotten Dunstable Crusaders. To Looking back on that game, that was definitely one of the highlights. I mean, playing in the Clark in general was a highlight, um, you know, just my whole basketball career. Uh, but that was probably one of my, you know, individual, you know, probably one of my favorite games I look back on when, you know, everything was just going the right way. That season we went 25-0 and went to the state championship, but Oakmont was a very, very good team. Um, these kids uh, that I had, Greg Toomey, Dylan Holmes, they had played with the Normandins and, and the kids from Oakmont growing up. So there was a real rivalry. And what I remember most about the Clark was the crowd. I don't know if I've, to that day, or to this day, seen a bigger crowd than what we saw in that Oakmont Groton Dunstable Championship. I went back and watched the Clark tournament since I was, I don't know, middle school. I watched guys like Greg and Dylan um, playing the Clark tournament. You know, I always wanted to play in the Clark tournament myself. Coach Wood said, you know, we want to win it every year. And I felt like I had to carry that on. And uh, I, thought, I thought we did a pretty good job. You know, my sophomore year, um, we didn't win it, but it was still an experience for the next two years. Now that I look back on it, it's definitely history that we, that we accomplished. So it was, it was satisfying, that's for sure. That was a really special, special time. How many times are you asked about that game in a year? Uh, well, when the Clark comes around, I'm asked about it a lot. Um, qu quite a bit. I mean, the, uh, the finals, we beat Bartlett. Uh, the score was 93-92. Uh, I think we were up eight or 10 at the half. We were down 17 at the end of the third quarter, and we ended up winning by one. Um, and it's just a great game. It, the, the, um, the pace of that game was incredible. Back and forth, and uh, just every time, uh, Northridge needed a basket, you know, Paul made the basket, you know, and uh, they would be down and Paul would make the basket, they'd, they'd go ahead, uh, you know, the team would catch him and then Paul, Paul was just unbelievable in that ball game. We're winning the ball game, the place is packed, it's Bob's first chance on center stage, he's got a sizable lead going to that last quarter, I was standing with everybody else in a jam-packed gym, uh, couldn't find a seat, and then it came. And then it started to happen. And then you could see Paul with the ball in his hands. And then Paul again with the ball in his hands. And Paul again with the ball in his hands. That whole fourth quarter, uh, I could see him now dribbling the ball from his position towards the top of the key to that right elbow for the stop and pop jump shot. Right elbow, stop and pop jump shot. We had a phenomenal team. Um, you know, we had some great players. Uh, people that, you know, uh, Hall of Famers here at Bartlett High School for basketball. And to have one person without a three-point, you know, the three-point line being in play, he would have had 40. We would throw one, two, three people at him, and we just couldn't stop him. He was just that prolific of a scorer at that time. It's amazing how, how people still remember uh, the old days. It's, 
It's nice. That's the time when I think the clock was really starting to become the clock. You know, where, where special things took place, special games, uh, special scoring efforts, uh, special big baskets. Before my father passed away, we, you know, we, we always talk about basketball, and he, and he, Paul Baker still goes down in his eyes as the best basketball player he's ever seen in high school basketball. Our goal every year is to make this tournament um, make them feel like they're playing in the NCAA tournament in a big time feel. When I first went up there, there was a, a term that was, it's not used so much anymore, it was a clock finish. And it was always some kind of a contested game right down to the end and it would be a last second shot or a couple of last minute shots and turn the tide around and victory and defeat would be right there for both teams. The professionalism, the way they run it, how important it is to the people that run it to make sure that it, it not only uh, stays the same, but it gets better. In my college days, a lot of my college teammates were jealous because they never had you know, a tournament like the Clark. Um, you know, some of the Eastern Mass guys, you know, they didn't, they didn't have the Clark tournament. And it's, it's definitely something special and unique just to Central Mass. A highlight of my career has well, been going up to Clark uh, and being able to participate in the tournament. It's just continues to grow and uh, really hasn't lost any of its luster. Right? The clock has been out there for 75 years. There's other tournaments that have tried to start up and so on and so forth, but they lacked the uh, leadership or they lacked the dedication or they lacked the volunteers. A legacy that's left from team to team to team, decade to decade to decade in your school, in your town and so on. You've got to play in the clock. One of my regrets in coaching all the years I coached was that I never had a chance to coach in the clock tournament and I would have loved to have done that. My old coach, Russ Granger, and other people have worked very, very hard to make sure that the, the tournament stays pure, straightforward, uh, very competitive. Uh, I wish there were more parking. <laughs> My first real experience is kind of funny. When I was at Worcester State, um, I was playing, and my friends and I would look for places to play during the off. Uh, times and we drove up one time I remember to to the to Clark looking to play pickup basketball and um, it was all set up for the tournament and I was like oh man I can't play and on top of the trophy was a little man in a, in a, in a shooting position there was a little ruckus in the study hall and a, a, a schoolmate of mine to be unnamed scaled a book like a boomerang and it sailed across the study hall and took the little man right off the top of the Without, without even disrupting the trophy. We just can't give it up. It's like, a, it's like, a, it's like poison ivy. Uh, it catches you and you, it never leaves you.